Good morning, everybody. So glad that you're here with us today. Let's all stand. We're going to worship. We're going to start by singing a carol, just reminding us of the incredible gift of Jesus as a baby. Let's sing together.
God, we thank you that there's power in your name. We thank you for the sacrifice you made, that from the cradle to the grave, your life brought us peace, brought us hope, and brought us freedom, brought us salvation. We thank you for the incredible gift of your son. May we remember it now and always. We love you. We thank you. Amen. Well, I want to welcome you all again here this morning. At this point, the kids, there's a movie going on for you over in that room and some other stuff. Everybody else, take the next few seconds, greet the people around you, make them feel welcome. Again, we're really glad that you're here this morning. And a very good morning and a welcome from me. It's great to hear the chatter, and I know that once you guys start, it's hard to stop, because we love the fellowship that we have with each other and seeing each other each Sunday, if not during the week. My name's Nicole, and a warm welcome to all of you who are here for our service this morning, and also to those who are online. If you're new, if it's the first time that you've been here, I hope that you were greeted as you came in and received one of our welcome bags. If not, we would love to meet you, so please come and introduce yourself to, to me. I'll be in the lobby area and make sure that you get one of those welcome bags, but great to have you here with us. Ray is away uh, for a well-deserved weekend break this weekend, so we've got the pleasure of having Keith um, up giving us the message this morning. Also, just to let you know that James is now on annual leave, so he's away for the next four weeks. So hopefully he will have a great rest. I know that he's staying in town, so he might rock up at church one Sunday. I don't know. I did ask him. He didn't say whether he would or he wouldn't. But if he does, just remember, he's on holidays. Last week, we had our AGM after the service. Now, one thing that we produce each year is an annual report. Now, this is a little bit different to um, normal annual reports that you might get. This is full of stories, things that have happened in people's lives over the last year. So, there are plenty of copies left of this, so please make sure you pick up one if you haven't read them in the breezeway at the entrance. Um, you know, it's only just a small snippet of the stories of God being at work in our midst, in people's lives and in the community. So, um, share stories with one another. It's a great way to encourage one another. But as you read those, rejoice with the work that God's doing. And he's also doing lots of work within our missionaries. And uh, those of you who are plugged into the newsletters that come through, I'm sure will be amazed at the work that he is doing. Um, both in Wayne, uh, over in the Ukraine, with the Purvises over in Cambodia, um, Fiji Bible College, I know that they heard lots of stories yesterday as several met with Prement, who was in town, which is just amazing. Um, but stories everywhere. But your way to support our missionaries is through our Two Birds catalogue. Now, it's the last Sunday that we have it up there behind the sound desk, 
And I just want to highlight just a few of the local gifts that you can buy to support the coach program. Um, coach mentoring, we started that three years ago within our church, and we're seeing lives changed through that. Now, there's a few very practical gifts that you can get, and I just want to plug some of those this morning. So, you can purchase a game of sequence to give to one of our um, families that are going through the coach mentoring. This is a great way for families to just learn together, playing games. It encourages just turn-taking, uh, losing uh, gracefully. That's a big lesson for kids, isn't it, when we play games? And I am competitive. It was lots of fun in our household, I'll tell you. Um, another thing that you can purchase to support the coach mentoring is a book, How to Protect a Child's Mental Health. This is actually written by Trevor and Annie Bolton, a local couple. Some of you might have heard them being interviewed on Rima Radio with excellent tips for just mental health. That's a, a book that can be gifted to a family going through our mentoring process program. Another one is strength cards for kids. I don't have any here. But when you purchase those things, you receive a card that then you can give to someone else to say, you know, this gift has been purchased on your behalf, and that supports local families who are being mentored through our coach program. Just a fantastic way to support a local missionary. But there's many other gifts, so make sure you go and visit the Two Birds stall last Sunday today, because it is only seven sleeps till Christmas, but only six sleeps till we have our Christmas Eve service. We've got two services running this year, so Christmas Eve at 6.30 or Christmas Day at 9.30 a.m. So many of you all heard about this. Last opportunity today to pick up an invitation and pass that to a friend or family member and invite them to come along. And we would love it if you are able to help us in serving at one of those services. We still uh, would love to have people help, especially with cleaning the toilets after the Christmas Eve service. Everyone wants to put up their hand for that, don't they? No. <laughs> There's lots of ways that you can become involved. So if you can serve at one of those services, again, come and see me down in the lobby after the service this morning. Um, I would like to actually just spend a little bit of time in prayer. Uh, we always pray for our offering, which last week we took up with the buckets, which was something we haven't done for some time, but that's going to be a once a month thing. So this morning as we give online or there is an offering box just there at the lobby, we will commit our finances to God. Um, also, we'll pray for another church within our community. So this morning, I'd like to pray for the Uniting Church, who has just commissioned a new pastor there in previous weeks. Um, so if you would like to join me in prayer this morning. Father, what a privilege it is just to sit here this morning in your presence, to know that you are with us, to know Emmanuel. God with us, your gift to us of Jesus Christ with a human face, but a reflection of you as our almighty Father and God. We give you thanks this morning. Father, you have gifted us with so much, an abundance of blessings that are just beyond words, more than we even know in our lives. One day we will know to the full. Father, this morning though, as we give back to you, in the offerings financially. Father, would you use them for your glory to see people come to know Jesus as their Lord and Saviour. We thank you too just for the work that you've been doing within our church, the stories that we've heard through our AGM. Father, for the work that you're doing in all of our lives to grow us to be more like Jesus. We pray your continued work within us as we submit ourselves to you. We want to commit the work of our missionaries to, Father, all those that we support, both overseas and here locally as well. We pray that through the Two Birds catalogue that we'll see just avenues being opened to minister to people within communi communities in such a practical way through these gifts that are purchased. We thank you for that opportunity. And Father, last week we celebrated as churches together and community in our carols. As we see the um, Christian Ministers Association working together 
and we thank you for the partnership that they have together as we desire to reach this community. And this morning we pray for, I believe his name is Dylan, uh, you know Father, who is the new pastor at the Uniting Church, and we pray for their ministry, the areas that they are able to reach within this community that no other church can reach. So we pray that Dylan will settle in quickly. Father, establish relationships and partnerships within that church that will see you glorified. We pray too for Ray on leave this weekend and for a restful time for him. For James also, as he commences his four weeks leave, Father, for refreshment and encouragement in you over this season. Father, we thank you too for the message that you have for us this morning through Keith. As we continue to count down the days to celebrating Christmas yet, we know that you are the focus of our lives every day for all that you have done for us. So we thank you, Father. We pray that our hearts will be open to you as you speak to us this morning, that you would reveal more of yourself to us in this time. We commit Keith to you and pray your blessing on him as he brings us the word this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you very much, Nicole, and welcome. Good morning. It's uh, great to be with you again this morning. You know, over the um, centuries and history, there have been probably hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of songs that have been written. We are privileged to live in a, an era where Christian music is just something that uh, we just have a smorgasbord of. This morning, I want to share concerning a song from heaven. It comes out of Luke 2, 14, it says, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men and women on whom his favor dwells. As they had done regularly before, the shepherds in our account of Christmas were out at night looking after the sheep. They were then interrupted and witnessed a phenomena and a spectacle which I would assume would have been difficult to describe. Heaven had sent an angel accompanied by its music group to declare the coming of Christ as the saviour of the world. And today we will look at this simple yet profound song from heaven and how it affects us in our lives. So I'm doing something different today in the fact that I'm going to have three mini sermons. It's a little bit like having a snack and then another snack and then another snack. You know how you just eat on the run? Hopefully it adds up to a meal. But in between each one, we're going to pause for a moment to just be led in a song that will just reinforce in our heart and give us the opportunity to respond to the truth that we've just heard. This little song starts, glory to God in the highest. It declares that bringing glory and exaltation to God and placing him on the highest place is a foundational principle in the kingdom of God. It is not just a way of introducing people. It is not just something that you put at the start to make it sound good. This is a foundational principle and truth. It is foundational in heaven for the angels. Revelation 4, 8 tells us this, day and night they never stop saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord, God Almighty, who was, who is, and who is to come. It's foundational for creation. Revelation 5, 13 tells us, and I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that is in them singing to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praise and honour and glory and power forever and ever. It's foundational for our lives if we follow him. John 4, 23 tells us, For the time is coming and now has come when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshippers the Father seeks. In other words, he's looking out for them. If we just wind back in time a little bit to the Old Testament, into Exodus chapter 20, 
where it tells us about the Ten Commandments. It begins this way and says, I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make an idol to bow down and worship. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Worship and the preeminence of God is foundational to every conversation, every act, every experience that happens in the kingdom of God. And then Paul in Romans tells us what we have done often as humans. Romans chapter 1 verses 21 and 20 to 23 says, For although they knew God, Paul writes, they neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him. But their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. And although they claimed to be wise, they became fools and they exchanged, listen to this, they exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images made to look like birds and animals and reptiles. The battle in our own lives today, the battle in our society, is not predominantly about morality or behavior, but one of allegiance. The first major issue of life that we need to ask is what place do we give to the Creator? Is it the highest place, the foremost place, the most important in bringing Him honor and worship? Otherwise, we have sidelined or relegated him out of the center of our lives. One day Jesus was asked what was the greatest commandment, to which he replied, Hear, O Israel. If he was standing here this morning, he'd say, Hey, I want you to listen, all the people of Harvey Bay. The Lord our God, the Lord is one. You should love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. And with all your strength. We're reminded through Ray's message last Sunday that when the Magi found the young boy Jesus, what was the very first thing they did? They worshiped him because it was the foundational principle of the kingdom of God. When John the Baptist was preparing the way and getting people ready for Christ's ministry, he said these words in John 3 and verse 20. He must increase and I must decrease. That is worship. It has been said that the simple definition of worship is simply this. He goes up and I go down. We sometimes, and particularly around this time of year, we use the little phrase, I really want to be able to celebrate Christmas. I would put the challenge to my heart first before I even share it to you today, we cannot celebrate Christmas unless he is in the highest place of our heart. That's why the angel started this song in this particular way. Matt's going to lead us in a very simple chorus. You may know it. If you do, I'd love you just to stay seated though and sing along. You'll sing it through a couple of times. If you don't know it, you'll pick it up. We place you on the highest place. For you are the great high priest. You are our mediator. We place you far above all else. And we come to you and worship at your feet. Thank you, Matt.
So the angels came that night and they sang glory to God in the highest. And it had deep meaning for the history of the world. And then they went on to say, and on earth, peace. It would appear at first glance that the choir from heaven got this one horribly wrong. I just looked up this last week some simple stats from the internet. For the 20 years since 2003 to this time, there have been over 120 hostile conflicts and wars around the globe with millions and millions of people who have been killed in the last 20 years. Of those, there are right at this time still between 45 and 50 of those major conflicts happening around the world today as we sit here. In fact, since the end of World War II, there are more current wars and conflicts happening right this day than any individual of the 77 years since 1945. Far from becoming more peaceful, our world is sliding the wrong way very quickly. And I think most of us recognize that it is the same trend in society with individuals and families. And yet it seems despite this, we still take the path of moving away from our maker and creator rather than seeking him with all of our heart. So what is this promise? That first Christmas, God had a gift for the world and the gift was his son, Jesus. From his life and message, we learned that if we honored him first, loved him and followed him, he would dwell with us and he would dwell in us. This is the God mystery that John wrote about in John 1 and 12 and 13, to all who received him, to those who believed on his name, he gave the right or the privilege to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent nor of human decision or of a husband's will, but born of God. This speaks about those who accept the gift of heaven, who is Jesus, into our lives. If we go back to Isaiah, written 700 years before Jesus came, it in chapter 9 and verse 6, it, the prophet wrote these words in the foretelling of this one who would come and called him the Prince of Peace. Christ is the true source of authentic peace. And then in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 14, we read these words, for he himself is our peace. The peace being sung about that night was not a national or an international or a family peace, but an indwelling peace in the human heart, part of receiving the gift of heaven, Jesus. Peace is in fact a person. Peace is a person. As a matter of fact, Jesus never spoke of a global peace until his final return. In the meantime, he says it will be the opposite. Talking with his disciples, as recorded in John chapter 16 and verse 33, he said, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. The peace that Jesus brings is a gift, not an experience determined by a circumstance. Usually when we use this word in our vocabulary, it's the absence of conflict. It's the, the fact that some stress has been taken away. And we're describing an experience that we are then enjoying. But the peace that Jesus speaks about is the peace that comes from his very character that is the gift into our lives 
to be able to know for certainty and have a confidence in all situations, regardless of where we find ourselves in. When the Apostle Peter was thrown into prison in the book of Acts, not knowing whether the next day he would still have his life, it's recorded that he was in a deep sleep between the guards. Rather than stressed, it seems that his heart was at peace even when his life was under threat. Some years ago in this church, a fine Christian professional man was falsely accused by authorities in our state of a major crime. It took two years to clear his name, and the judge finally said that it should never have gone to court in the first place. But during that two years, this man displayed a deep trust in Christ, was continually joyful, and told those around him not to worry. He knew the Prince of Peace. And again, the words of Jesus in John 14, 27, he says, peace I leave with you. It's a gift I'm giving to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Don't let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Peace came to us as a person. The name of God coming to us is called Emmanuel. God is with us. And that's going to lead us just in that song as we reflect on God's gift to us today, the person of Jesus, the peace that the angels sung about that night that you and I can have right this day, regardless of what the news brings up tonight, what the media uh, records. You have Christ. Thanks, Matt. Let's stay remained and seated. Let's sing it together. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel, that mourns in lonely exile here, until the sun of So the song that night was very short. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to all men and women on whom his favour dwells. God does not select out favourites. Some translations say all men who please him or all men in whom he is well pleased. But this may tempt us to believe that we need to strive to win his favour, which is not the case. Favour, I believe, here refers to his grace. 
When his grace comes into our lives, his favour is upon our lives. So the promise of the angels that night was a special gift of peace to all people regardless of age, race, background, social strata, intellectual or other ability, who in welcoming Christ into their lives and saying thank you for this extraordinary gift, receive his grace that provided forgiveness of sin, release from shame and freedom from bondage and addictions. A time when I have witnessed this peace in lives is being with people in the days and even hours before they die. I have many beautiful and amazing memories of those who have received Christ often showing a peace that is indescribable as they wait to go home. But I have also seen the anxious soul. One lady comes to mind. She had regularly attended church. But I never realized until I sat beside her hospital bed, which turned out only a matter of two days before she passed away, that she never really knew Jesus and had not received his gift to her. And at the time as we talked, she was gripped by fear of the unknown that lay ahead. And I shared with her the story of Jesus and prayed with her. But friends, today, the good news through the angels that night was not one of religion. It was not a format. It was not a set of rules. It was not an institution or a ritual or a tradition. It was not a set of meaningless sacrifices. It was a person. And his name is Jesus. He came and he pitched his tent next to ours, as recorded in John 1. And he gave his life at Calvary for our sin. And in doing so, he brought the gift of peace of heaven into our lives. We do not have to strive today to win his favor. It's bestowed upon us as a gift through his grace. Long before Jesus came and in all the years since, people have pursued and today continue to pursue avenues of wanting to appease God. Sadly, it lacks joy, it does not offer hope for the future, and can often just add to the despair of their lives. I share with you this morning the song of heaven, simple and brief, brought a reassurance of a God of compassion who loved us, who knows us by name, who understands our challenges, and recognizes our weaknesses and he provides an eternal hope for the future. So this morning, whenever we meet him, walk with him, experience him, encounter him, we realize the foundational principle is we should worship him with our heart. He goes up, we go down. We place him on the highest place in our lives and give him glory 24-7. But today, our responsibility is to be able to receive the gift. Many gifts are going to be given in this next week to, to one another and wouldn't it be a tragedy for those who left them open and didn't share the joy? What a tragedy today for those that have not unpacked the gift of heaven and receive Christ into their lives. If you're one of those people today, I just encourage you, by faith, in these last moments of the service, just reach out to him. He's waiting to hear the intent of your heart. And as the Prince of Peace, he allows us the experience of not being snowed under the pressures of this world, 
but walking through life's challenges in partnership with him. Friend, this is amazing grace. That's going to lead us in this as we sing this morning. I'd love for you to just set your hearts free. This is not a, a song in church. As we in the presence of the King. We don't have the choir of heaven this morning, but we have their song. Thank you, Matt, as you lead us. Let's stay seated and during it, Matt might invite us to stand. Father, we humbly come before you as the huge beneficiaries of your gift. And today, Father, may we just continue on this pathway of learning to worship, just learning to respond, and living in the reality 
of the peace of your Son. In Jesus' name, amen. Matt, just lead us in the last song. Thank you, brother. As we end the service, we're going to sing Emmanuel, God with us again. It's a good reminder that we go and tell the good news of our Savior's birth. At this point, I'm going to ask Nathan to come up here as part of the elder team. They have an announcement to make in regards to what happened at the AGM last week. At this point, we're going to end our online service. So thanks for being with us here this morning. I'm going to head